Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek Artist back again with another video. So I was watching some of my older videos and some of you may know that I had made a video almost 5 years back about 4 different ways of blending colors in Photoshop and a lot of people found that video very useful, especially beginner artists. And the reason I made the video was because a lot of people wanted it and I still get comments on many of my newer videos asking me to make a video on color blending. So as I was watching the video, I realized it felt quite dated and I felt the need to make an updated video on color blending. So this video is not gonna be all theory or technical like the last one. It's gonna be a lot more practical and problem and solution oriented. So what's the problem or the question? The problem is how to go from this to this. How to turn this basic color flats done like cell shading into a polished, smoothly blended and rendered output. That's the challenge. And to find out the solution, you need to watch the video till the end. So to start off, I'm going to be showing not one, but four different ways in which you can blend colors in Photoshop. So here's the first method and it's manual color mixing. So the idea here is to pick color from the first side and paint it on the second side, then pick color from the second side and paint it on the first side and then pick the new mid-tone color from the central area and then paint it on both sides and then just keep repeating the process until the sharp border in the center completely disappears into a smooth transition from the first color to the second color so that's the whole idea so now let's try it i'm gonna select the default soft round brush keep the opacity of the brush low around 20 percent keep both pen pressure options on and then yeah pick color from the left side pin on the right side pick from the right side pin on the left side and pick from the center pin it on both sides and just keep repeating the process until the fine border in between completely disappears into a smooth transition and there it is a beautiful and smooth blend of the two colors and now let's proceed to the second method and that's the smudge method so for this i'm going to be picking the smudge tool and then decide on the strength if i keep the strength low it's going to take me forever to blend the colors and you're just not going to get a very smooth blend or a very gradual transition and it's also going to be pretty slow and tough on your hardware if i keep the strength pretty high then it's going to be a very drastic amount of smudging and you're not going to get that neatness out of it so a good idea is to keep it somewhere in the middle like i do somewhere around 50 to 60 percent and then just smudge it and once the middle border gets blurry you can increase the strength and finish off the rest to get a much smoother blend to get a much smoother transition and just remember to not make the strokes too long if you drag them too much then they're gonna take a while so keep the strokes small almost like painting dots with little drag now next we come to the third method and that's the mixer brush technique so with this i'm going to be choosing the mixer brush tool and notice the settings and i'm going to be selecting default soft round brush keep the size relatively large now for the wetness if i keep it too low it's gonna take a bit more of brushing to get the smoothness and if i keep it too hard again the blend is gonna be a bit abrupt so what i like to do is i keep around 20 percent and notice how quickly this happens and i personally prefer using this a lot because it gives you the fastest result and probably the cleanest result in a very short time and one important thing to keep in mind about this method is that you have to make sure that all the colors are merged into one layer if even one part is in a different layer you're gonna get this weird distortions around the edge and you're never gonna end up getting a smooth blend so always make sure that the colors are merged into one layer and you're painting on that merged layer and there's absolutely no transparency anywhere great and now finally we come to the fourth method and it's a little different from the others because what we'll be doing is instead of just mixing colors we'll start with just one color then pick another color and just paint it on any of the sides using the soft round brush tool set at a low opacity that way we're gonna get a very smooth and gradual transition from one color to the other 
you can also use the gradient tool for this but if you're trying to paint a curved surface then this is the way to go so now that you know all of these cool techniques it's time to apply them to solve the problem we talked about and i'm gonna be using a mix of all four techniques but mainly i'll be using the mixer brush tool so what we have here is a human arm as you can see uh, shoulder tricep bicep and forearm simple subject so our goal right now is to use the blending techniques that we learned and apply on this to get a very smooth blend of colors a properly rendered output so i'm going to be duplicating all the layers and merge them into one so that we don't get any weird distortions while using the mixer brush tool and the next part is pretty much simple just paint along the edges until the sharp edges completely blend into a very smooth and gradual transition same for the highlights just like the shadows and for complex forms like these you might want to look at good references because the key to realism is a nice blend of soft and hard edges if you blend everything all the sharp edges into blurry smooth edges then chances are that it's not going to look very realistic so always keep in mind that form is very important so i'm just blending the areas that don't have very sharp bends and I'm keeping the brush size relatively small because if I go too big, I'm going to end up mixing a lot of things at the same time, which I don't want. I want to keep, I want to do it selectively. I want to tackle one area at a time to get the most neatness and have maximum control over what I'm blending. Great. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to take a new layer and I'm going to paint some brighter highlights in certain areas. So I'm going to pick a brighter shade of the current highlight, which is pretty much white. And I'm going to be painting these highlights in some of those areas that look almost like reflections. And then I'm going to be using the smudge tool to get that nice blend. And it goes from sharp to blurry to get the maximum realism. I can increase the brush size if I want a little more blend and then I'm using the eraser to uh, bring down the opacity of certain areas and finally I'm going to take another layer and choose the normal default soft round brush keep the opacity very low and paint some gradients to bring in some variation of colors and to sculpt a better more 3d-ish form again you might want to look at good references to get it accurately trying to paint those muscle strains in the shoulder and finally um, picking some of the highlight colors to paint some extra highlights and bring some variation in the skin tone and finally i'm going to choose a darker shade darker color of the shadow color that we have and paint some of the ambient occlusions and darker shadows to again get a better variation of colors and a better quality lighting it's very important to keep the opacity of the brush very low if you want a very clean and smooth rendering so there we have it and if you want to go an extra mile and want to draw some veins then for that i'm going to take a new layer and with the brush size set to very low and opacity high i'm going to pick some of the highlight colors and paint it towards the shadow area and then pick the shadow color and paint to add a bit of depth to the veins to give them volume and some highlight as well some of the veins are going to be hard with hard edges and some of them are going to be a bit soft and this is completely optional it has nothing to do with the blending tutorial but again our goal should always be to improve and go to the next level i'm erasing some of the areas to make it a bit soft some nice vascularity so there we have it guys i hope this video was useful and if you like my content make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming videos so thanks for watching the video and that's it for now see you on the next one peace